I think that we can start now. Uh, thank you, for everyone, for being here today uh, to listen to our the presentation, and we start. Yeah, I'm uh, very glad to hear you to uh, tell you about uh, uh, our story and how we build the infrastructure for the cloud, public and private, and uh, collaborative on it. So uh, let me introduce myself. I'm uh, Duc from Viettel uh, in Vietnam, and my, here in my college. And my name is Ving, and uh, you guys can call me Tobin. So we are both uh, um, we are both uh, organizer of Vietnam Open Infra Company uh, Community, a member of um, uh, Open Infra Community. So um, here's our story. First of all, um, Vietnam is a uh, Vietnam. We are from Vietnam, and uh, Viettel is the, the largest telco company in Vietnam. Uh, we have uh, 170 subscriber. Uh, over 10 countries, including Asia, America, and uh, Africa. And for now, we have near uh, 8,000 right and uh, 70,000 square meter floor. For now, in um, Vietnam, we have eight data centers. Until uh, 2025, we, we have 13. For the cloud infrastructure, now we, we have um, 150,000 physical core over the 30 petabyte of storage, uh, including SAP and uh, SAN storage. Yeah, here's the, the list of cloud services that uh, Viettel provide, including the service from infrastructure layer, co-location service to the platform application and uh, uh, consulting um, <coughs> managing service. In that um, to the service, we are uh, mostly developed by ourselves. And um, besides, we uh, provide marketplace for other company or the other partner. We uh, provide the solution in our uh, infrastructure. So here is the main part of this uh, presentation. In uh, thousand and um, th uh, thirteen. Um, we face a lot of um, we face a lot of um, difficulty to um, manage our infrastructure. The first of all is uh, we have um, uh, a lot of vendors that using um, uh, physical and also virtual machine based on uh, you know that um, VMware or some kind of uh, uh, other hypervisor. And also the physical. Uh, besides that, uh, we use SAN storage for uh, from by <coughs> seven different vendors. So such fragmentation cause uh, very difficulty in deployment as well as operation and explosion. <coughs> when um, we um, when we overlapping um, the whole infrastructure for ten uh, country. Uh, in only one in a no network operation center in Vietnam. Besides that, manual deployment process take a lot of time, and at that time, um, <coughs> we have facing that um, we must integrate integrators with um, a lot of vendor from um, other country. So the operation operation performance man monitoring. Warning, alerting with many difficult when bring some new uh, hardware into the network interaction between uh, vendor. So um, difficult. And um, at that time, we have to decide that what model we uh, we should try between IT uh, IT <coughs> infrastructure and telco infrastructure. So uh, the decision and the question is, what cloud what is the architect that we choose, and what is the core technology we choose, and how we build the human resource. Uh, <coughs> here is the infrastructure. Uh, we decided that we separate IT and telco cloud uh, into 
uh, small deployment. You know, um, we, um, we, we have uh, several uh, private cloud cluster, mostly based on OpenStack and SAPS. Uh, we have only one the data center inventory in, uh, inventory management, only one orchestration uh, system, and only one um, global network operation center. And uh, for the IT cloud, only OpenStack. If not OpenStack, we uh, use um, physical server to deploy service. Uh, <coughs> Regarding the infrastructure, uh, using open infrastructure technology as so as a foundation, uh, OpenStack uh, is used to um, general computing uh, needs. Uh, you know, uh, we um, provide um, uh, virtual machine and other that uh, some kind of HPC using GPU, uh, uh, GPU service. Uh, and for the for the um, Store it. We are using SAP for software device storage and uh, several kind of uh, sound storage. This depends on the deployment and depend on the the requirement of the application. But mostly uh, we use SAP for the um, <coughs> for the whole infrastructure. For the network, um, we use uh, the topology of uh, LISPI. I can show you later in um, in uh, next slides. Uh, after supporting technology based on open source product like uh, Netbook, uh, Prometheus, uh, Grafana, LTSearch, and some kind of um, product that you see uh, around here, all is open source. And here is a picture of uh, 2023, 2023. In uh, 2018, we only focused on infrastructure, OpenStack, SAP, uh, KVM, OpenBSwitch, and uh, Linux. Okay. Uh, to to do that, we have the, uh, we have follow the open technology, open uh, um, infrastructure, open ecosystem, and um, we have uh, training our our colleagues to contribute to the open stack and uh, at the um, open community, open uh, Prometheus, Kube Spray, uh, Cluster API. And uh, also besides that, we, uh, you can see in the, the corner, that's some, uh, some project that we build by ourselves and uh, uh, public it. It's uh, uh, in on, uh, on our GitHub. Here is vCloud, don't forget to be awesome. Some kind of uh, project that we are um, uh, facing with so many difficulties in uh, operating uh, the whole infrastructure because of, uh, we have a lot of, um, of sand storage from uh, uh, five, five, I mean, five um, <coughs> vendor. So uh, we develop the 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 the, <coughs> the exporter for Prometheus to monitor all the sand. And uh, some kind of um, projects that um, OpenStack does not support fully, so we uh, decided to build ourselves and uh, public it. So here is uh, the timeline. Yes, um, 2018, first cloud, first team, uh, first team uh, build based on OpenStack, SAP, and Prometheus. Uh, yeah. <coughs> By the next year, the first cluster was run. 30% uh, of legacy IT infrastructure was lived and shipped into cloud. <coughs> and um, build, we built a team to uh, migrate um, to in micro -suite, micro -suite architecture. After two years, another cluster was built in uh, Hanoi. And 70% uh, legacy IT moved to uh, the new infrastructure. And uh, we are also provide the solution to uh, three other country. In uh, 2021, the third cloud cluster in uh, Ho Chi Minh, this is South Vietnam. And uh, we, uh, we, we have 85 legacy IT infrastructure migrated. Why 85? Because of some kind of, um, some kind of database that 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 um, 
work in uh, not good in cloud. So we still keep 20% still run on the Bemito or vehicle server, such as the Oracle database, something like that. Yeah. <coughs> and it's been to, uh, to, to uh, other countries. For now, we uh, have a escalator uh, open stack and 90% uh, legacy uh, infrastructure related. And uh, we uh, become a public pro uh, cloud provider in uh, Vietnam, just for Vietnam, and uh, uh, sell service for the uh, government uh, banking and financial service, manufacturing. Yes, the most um, the most thing I I I, uh, I will tell you uh, about the our lesson. <coughs> Here is a big picture of uh, architecture. So uh, in Vietnam, we uh, separate the country into uh, three parts: uh, the north, the south, and the center. And uh, each in each side, we uh, each region we have uh, several data center. So in each data center, we um, separate into the AZ, and uh, all are connected with uh, the baseball, uh, at least that uh, 2,000 uh, gigabit, I'm uh, sorry, to, um, 200 uh, gigabit per second to the backbone. In, uh, HD, uh, in HDZ, uh, in HD AZ, we uh, use list by, list by uh, network topology to uh, uh, and the each land to extend the land between uh, different locations. Make sure that the um, network are connected for the all uh, around Vietnam. For the OpenStack deployment, uh, anyone here um, know about the OpenStack or uh, SAP or some, some kind of, uh, yes. Because the open stack deploy is quite quite difficult, and um, when we extend the cluster, so many problems will occur. So the first thing is uh, we know until now is do not deploy too many compute nodes in a uh, open stack cluster. Uh, for my case, each cluster we will deploy only uh, five to six hundred compute nodes, and each whole maybe. Uh, <coughs> 10,000 VM for each is bad. If you have more computers, the whole cluster will slow, slow down and so many problems will occur. Yeah. Uh, you need to pay attention to the response time of the OpenStack API and DB query when the cluster grow up. <coughs> because of uh, slow API will, uh, will um, affect the experience when the uh, uh, you, you, you can imagine that be, uh, when you uh, click on the horizon, on the um, uh, <clears throat> on the command line, it takes a lot of time that respond to you, and sometimes it's uh, time out <coughs> when you um, <coughs> when you um, using it. Monitoring is good, but considering about the metric, do not do not monitor too much merit metric because it's can um, increase the loss of the whole system. Not only the monitoring system, the whole system, the ZOR cluster may be heavy loss because of monitoring. So for the, um, for the um, deployment, um, we face that um, each time we build the cluster, we extend the cluster, we buy several model of server, several model of uh, CPU, so that um, it's VM on uh, on on that um, uh, cluster cannot migrate, like migrate. So you need to unify CPU model uh, in the Nova config for the the the, the um, I think uh, for the um, one AZ maybe ten or twenty twenty compute node. You um, unify by one CPU model for the VM inside it, and if uh, you have uh, some kind of um, some kind of um, um, compute node that different model you separate into next into to another uh, cluster, <coughs> and uh, you uh, have to clustering the compute node by CPU model or by storage, 
Um, if you using SAPs, you can uh, <coughs> use the same storage, but you, if uh, you uh, using SAN, you have to separate for the SAN switch that the compute node connected. And uh, <coughs> for the lamination of the virtual machine, you have config to slow down the, comp the, the CPU during the live migration to make sure that the RAM, the memory is not changed too much so that the uh, virtual machine can migrate from one compute to another compute smoothly. So um, pay attention to the default configs of uh, the few of urban stack. Uh, <coughs> some kind of uh, configs that um, periodic running such as no file, no chunk, can make heavy loads of the database query when the compute nodes go grow up. So um, one, um, one, uh, one query can make um, high loads on, um, on the cluster. We have uh, an experience that uh, Nova, Nova um, collect uh, all the information of the VM and run each min, uh, one minute per time. So um, uh, it it cause up uh, so many query into the database and the whole cluster very slow. Uh, take care of hard app policy, edit policy, uh, mark connection in the backend. Sometimes it is full and it refuse connect from the client. For the step. Uh, you have to pay attention to uh, favorite domain from design. It may be a uh, host level or right level, maybe or the uh, top right or left. This depends on the importance of your data narrator. If you um, if you uh, separate into server and the uh, and the 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 whole the right uh, going down, you still low your data. So depend on heavily uh, on uh, network infrastructure. So make sure that you have a stable network connection and the latency is low. Uh, <coughs> very low, low latency. So therefore, the VM will get the will get the, the <coughs> IO latency good. For the VM, you have to take care of for security. Uh, and um, open stack just for security only allows the packet with IP and max address uh, no to open stack by default. So therefore, some kind of application that just change the IP and the mark of the packet. And um, if you uh, you enable the for security, you cannot use this function. So please disable or access the address pair for the port. Entropy for the VM is very important. Some kind of um, application that running on Java or uh, <coughs> Oracle need entropy to, to, to start. And if you don't have entropy, um, uh, your application may be some kind of uh, cannot start or start slowly. And for the network performance of the virtual machine, please enable the multi queue for the VM. Yeah. So here is the uh, uh, assistor that um, uh, running on the infrastructure. So in the might be. OK. So um, and the next part is uh, for the Kubernetes service. Uh, we should go with cluster API uh, to provide our de dedicated cluster and manage uh, Kubernetes for now. And uh, you know that uh, cluster API can provision a dedicated cluster very good. However, uh, to bring up manage uh, community cluster and uh, service community cluster, uh, we have to do uh, some extra thing here. And uh, currently, uh, we serve uh, around dozens of community community cluster um, we total over uh, 500 nodes and over uh, 5,000 CPU and over six terabyte of memory. Actually, uh, that's not too big for now. Uh, however, 
uh, these uh, community things uh, will grow soon and um, we learn a lot from uh, this clutter. And uh, we can sum up a few things uh, to share for you guys here. As you know, uh, we use Cluster API for the core of our community uh, service. So um, it's can, uh, it can provision good for a dedicated cluster or a traditional cluster using a Kube ADM. Uh, the fact that uh, we build our service on uh, top of the infrastructure that powered by OpenStack and uh, therefore some customization uh, should be made uh, like a cluster API provider and cloud controller for OpenStack that's um, in our infrastructure. And we do provide uh, Kubernetes for our customer, therefore uh, authentication and uh, authorization, especially uh, the connection uh, from the client cluster to uh, our infrastructure should be uh, should we, we pay attention? So, um, monitoring and alerting and logging, or uh, even audit log for control plane is really important. Uh, monitoring to make sure we meet the SLA that we uh, announced to uh, our customer. And um, alerting to know when our operator should jump in to uh, resolve uh, and save the service. And uh, locking and audit lock is good for uh, security reason and knowing what to do when uh, the client's cluster face an issue. So another pain point uh, that we want to share you guys here, uh, maybe uh, you guys already know that, that ETCD is really, really um, sensitive with uh, the duration or latency, this latency. That, um, that's why uh, we recommend that uh, uh, the latency or duration should be less than 10 milliseconds. And uh, in the history, we hit by a latency very, very hard and our cluster is not stable at all. So, um, and over the last four years, uh, we come to a uh, conclusion that uh, Kubernetes clusters should have a checklist for you guys before deploying and uh, when you guys deploying and after deploying. And we have uh, around uh, over 70 items in that checklist. And uh, some major criteria related to that checklist uh, can be uh, shown here is uh, related to the functionality of uh, the Kubernetes cluster, uh, deployment architecture, security, and um, high availability and fault tolerance. Uh, and backup and restore, monitoring and observability, and uh, finally, your deployment uh, should be fully documented uh, for other people that join to your team can maintain uh, that uh, community cluster. And uh, the next thing we want to share here is related to our database service, and we provide some database like uh, um, MySQL, MariaDB, and PostgreSQL. So um, uh, there are lots of there are a lot of things to do uh, here. Uh, we build our database services uh, based on OpenStack Trope uh, project, and um, uh, to make a uh, Trope fully function, uh, we have to do uh, we have to build our task queue and task schedule for background task processing and uh, creating a solution for uh, DB backup. And, uh, you know, remember to grab all the metric uh, related to the control plane and uh, uh, the management uh, of your cluster. So um, uh, we have something to share here related to OpenStack Trope uh, as a uh, uh, foundation for database service. And OpenStack Shop is, is great, and it will be better if uh, we make sure we have to help check solution for failover when our database in, in uh, trouble. And pay attention to automatic backup for DB, like fully backup and uh, incremental backup. And um, 
one of the most important things here is uh, bring uh, support, SL supports to our database uh, and uh, a customer can use it in production uh, environment. Uh, and we have the same story with uh, Kubernetes deployment. You should have a checklist for DB deployment. And uh, in Vitel, we have a list that contain around over 40 items uh, related to um, uh, something like version to make sure that the version you currently use is still supported and deployment architecture and pay attention to the right sizing of your database and uh, backup and restore and tuning configuration. Don't overuse default um, configuration. They will hit you really hard. And monitoring and observability and security, security structures, as um, removing redundant user and uh, enable SSLs and TLS support. And last but not least, uh, your deployment should uh, be fully documented for other guys can join in your project. And um, in conclusion, yeah, uh, thanks to um, our great open source community in Vietnam and all over the world, uh, without you guys, we cannot grow to uh, this side and standing here to talk uh, about this. And in this picture, we want to share one uh, of the um, one of the, the the idea in our Vietnam community that the first one is related to the community as you know that we use open source we love open source and we contribute back to the open source community too and we learned a lot uh, from our community thanks to uh, you guys here to bring there a lot of knowledge and information that we can can, can build our infrastructure. And shout out to some other guy uh, in Open Infra community over there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and um, the next thing we want to share is that you should make really good uh, relationship with other company. Uh, because uh, other companies, not just our rival, they can uh, have uh, a lot of great knowledge and uh, insight that you can learn. And the last thing we want to share here is uh, related to the college or university. We had a strong relationship with our uh, other college in Vietnam and university in Vietnam for mentoring students, uh, not just for us, uh, but for uh, the community too, and other company can have a really, really great human resource in cloud computing. So um, to be finished this uh, presentation, uh, I sum up some takeaway here for you guys to, uh, to, to oh, take a picture. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, the first one is related to infrastructure and the second uh, is uh, related to storage, deployment, and virtual machine. And then uh, we have uh, some sharing in community service and DB service with OpenStack Trove. And that's all for our presentation today. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we do have uh, some extra minutes here. Any people have the question for us? Yeah, you can uh, use that mic over there. Uh, so thank you for the presentation. I think it was uh, very helpful. Um, you guys uh, have the emphasis of the cloud solution and VM uh, in Vietnam around OpenStack. If you were to take this to the next level, do you think you would remove OpenStack and have more focus on Kubernetes running on bare metal directly and eliminate the entire OpenStack layer? Uh, because, like personally, um, uh, you know, I think more and more 
we're moving away from open stack from what I've seen in the industry for some time now. And um, I was just wanted to know what are your thoughts about the future generation of the, uh, of the cloud evolution your company has for the country? Yeah, thank you. The first of all, uh, question that um, I have uh, two ideas for the question. The first thing, um, we need to consider the, what's the workload we run on the community, and that workload can, can or cannot run on the virtual machine, like OpenStack or VMware, whatever uh, hypervisor, you know? If the workload can run on the virtual machine, let it run on the virtual machine. Because of, we have a, a, a layer that um, operating or and uh, uh, <coughs> some kind of managing the the whole infrastructure, and it easier f for you. It easier for you to deploy on virtual machine for uh, for the v VM virtual machine provisioning, deploying, and uh, terminating than the 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 um, the bare metal. Beside it, yeah, the the second idea is OpenStack also have a, a um, project that's called Ironic that allow you to deploy the um, bare metal. So one OpenStack for many for many it's all the VM and all the uh, bare metal service. So the depend on the code you can you can uh, deploy it on the virtual machine or on the bare metal. Is it okay? Yeah, actually, we have uh, we are trying uh, we are trying the Canadian for now. Yeah, thank you. Um, I a couple of questions. One one's a quick one. Um, what were you guys using for the underlying networking underneath Neutron? Uh, was it like OVN or was it OVS or was that an NL2 driver for your uh, network switches? Or for now, we are using uh, uh, Open VSwitch uh, and M ML2 plugin. For the whole infrastructure, but we are planning to um, to to uh, have some kind of lab and uh, marketing to the OVN, but uh, not not uh, this year. Maybe next year. We uh, we we uh, when we the first cluster go uh, bigger, we can separate into next cluster and we maybe deploy as a OVN. Okay. Uh, the second question. Um Maybe a little longer, but uh, uh, you guys actually, I saw you did a customized CSI for your storage driver. Um, was there a particular reason why you went customized versus using uh, the Cinder CSI? Uh, yeah, uh, related to that, because uh, our infrastructure have some customization before. That's why we have to customize the CSI driver for that. So um, we hope that in the future, uh, when we use standards OpenStack and we can uh, use the standard and default the CRI driver for, for it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, I just wanna say it's um, really impressive what you built in five years. It's uh, really, really cool. And maybe thank this you. question is a talk for next KubeCon, but I'm just wondering what, what kind of methodologies, how did you work in five years uh, to create all this? Did you use GitOps or how did you implement DevOps or something? It's, it just seems really overwhelming. Uh, related to this, thank you. Um, we are we are running some kind of DevOps contra in our company. Uh, we not not actually uh, the GitHub here, just uh, DevOps and uh, SRE. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you. Hello. Uh, thank you. This is very helpful. Um, just a uh, couple of questions. Uh, one regarding uh, creating the Kubernetes cluster on top of OpenStack. Uh, so when you create that cluster, so um, you create like each CD on uh, on the OpenStack itself, right? Each CD cluster for each of those Kubernetes clusters. Uh -huh. uh, can you repeat the question? So, uh, like, w w so when you create the Kubernetes cluster on top of OpenStack, uh, so why do you run the HCD cluster? Like, do you, do you kind of create a HCD, highly available HCD for each of those Kubernetes cluster? Uh, we have a server option here. Uh, the first one is uh, running HCD cluster separate with our uh, control plane cluster. And uh, the other option is that's running is the SCD uh, cluster with the the control plane, and um, and in the near future we will uh, separate all the SCD cluster to the other cluster not related to the control plane at all, and uh, that's how we have us uh, um, avoid some 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 kind of issue related to uh, this other. Okay, thank you. Um, so the next question is like, have you guys uh, thought about trying like V cluster, like uh, having uh, K3S running inside Kubernetes for each of those clients? Mm, actually, we we are not try this for now. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you very much for joining this session. Oh, so you can ask ask here. Because, uh, yeah, okay. uh, because of time is uh, running out, the time is running out, as you can ask it here. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining this session.